What defense to do is they watch two things in air. The first is they watch the ball coming out of the setter's hands, and the second thing is they tend to watch the block too much. The first thing we do when we know who the hitter is, is we start watching their eyes. And what I mean by that is we have a, we have a sequence here when we play defense. First, we watch the passer's arms. That tells us if the ball's coming over the net. If a passer's arms are down like this, you better get ready to receive an overpass. It's coming your way. Second thing that we watch is the setter. And we watch these setters like hawks. All six players in the court are watching the setter whether where they're going to set the ball. The next thing we watch is once we know who the hitter is, we start watching three things. The hitter, the hitter, and of course, the hitter. Once we know who the hitter is, we watch one thing in particular, and that's their eyes and their face. That gives away when they're hitting. Great hitters, have, great diggers have learned how to train themselves at looking at a hitter's eyes and face, and they know instinctively where they're going to hit the ball. The next thing we do is we get in a hitter's approach. In other words, if a hitter's going to take an approach to hit line, what we're going to do is we're going to get where their shoulders are facing. Why do we get to where their shoulders are facing? Because that's where a hitter's power is. That's where 95% of the hitters hit a ball is right where their shoulders are facing. That's why we don't watch the ball and that's why we don't watch the block because we want to be where their shoulders are facing. The next thing we do is we keep our shoulders focused on this part of the court. So as we're moving around the court back here, what we're going to do is you're going to keep your shoulders right here on this spot right in the middle of the court at the 10, 3 meter line just to be safe. So as we're moving back here, what you're going to do is you're going to learn how to keep your shoulders locked on that spot. If you move to the right, drop this shoulder, raise this one. If you move to the left, you're going to drop the right shoulder and bring the left one up. Always keeping your shoulders locked on that spot right there. That's crucial. If you dive, keep your shoulders locked on that spot. If you're chasing a ball back here, keep your shoulders locked on that spot. The next thing is, is you have to have your arms out ready to dig a ball before the hitter ever strikes the ball. This is the rule of ball control one more time. When you keep your arms out motionless, you're going to get great digs on the ball. You don't want to bring them down, you don't want to swing them, you don't want to cross them or do it any of this other extracurricular stuff that you want to do. You want to avoid all that. Arms out, shoulders on the spot. Please avoid jumping up. That's how you lose control of the ball. And the last thing you're going to do is you're going to put your toes in and you're going to fall into the hitter's wrist. In other words, guys, girls, don't dig the ball, dig the hitter. That is the most common mistake people make is they start going after the ball. But good players, what we do is when we see the wrist turning this way, we've already gone this way in order to dig the ball. When we see a player go up and we see this wrist going this way, we're already leaning towards where the wrist is going. We do not dig balls. We dig hitters. We dig the wrist of the hitter. So make sure you watch the eyes of the hitter. Watch their face. Put your shoulders right there when they're digging. Have your arms out so you have a good chance of hitting the ball. And one of the most important things is make sure you dig the hitter, the hitter, the hitter. And that's how to play great defense. When you position yourself on defense, you want to make sure that you're able to actively see the hitter's eyes and face. This is why when we play defense, the great players always watch the eyes and face. If I'm right here, right now, I can't see the hitter's eyes. I don't know where he's going to hit. So what you have to do is you have to move to a gap in the block so you can see their eyes and face. When you do this, you're in a much better position to dig the ball. Now, the most important part, and this is where everybody makes a mistake, is when you have a block here, what you have to learn how to do is to avoid looking at these two people. You don't want to watch the ball. You don't want to watch the block. Irregardless where they're blocking, when I see that block right there and they form, you got to be able to see the hitter. You have to ignore the block. The other thing that I see a lot of is when you see a hitter bring their arms back like this, it means they're going to hit the ball hard. When you see a hitter bring their arms back like this or they run up to the net like this, it means they're going to tip. 
So if I'm back playing defense, what I'm going to do is if I see those arms go back far, I'm going to stay back on the perimeter because I know they're going to hit the ball. But if I see these arms stop short or they come up like this, it means they're going to tip the ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step up into the court to cut the court in half. So when I see these arms go back a very small amount, I'm going to come like this because I know there's a good chance that they're going to tip a ball. So not only do we watch the hitter's eyes and face, but we also watch the arms coming back. Make sure you can see the hitter's eyes. Make sure you can see their face. Watch how far they bring their arms back. And one of the most important things you do is you fall into the wrist with your shoulders locked on this spot over here. That's how you play great defense. Dig the hitter, not the ball. Let's talk about blocking for a minute. Here's the good news is you've already been taught blocking for very good reason. Blocking is a part of defense. It doesn't matter whether you're blocking or digging. We go through the same exact sequence. First thing we do is we watch a passer's arms. Again, if you see a passer go like this, ball's coming over the net. You have two options here. One is to go up and hit the ball. And by the way, don't follow through. That's how you net. Or the second option is step back off the net, get your hands up, and start calling out your setter's name to cue them to run up and run the offense. Once, we, uh, once the ball's passed, the second thing we do is we watch the setter. And again, we watch these setters like hawks. The best time to watch a setter is during warm-ups. If you're watching a setter during warm-ups, they're going to give away their whole offense for the most part. If you see a setter push their hands out, the ball's usually coming out here. If you see a setter put their hands higher, it means they're going to set quick. If you see a setter arch their back, it usually means they're going to back set. That's what you should be moving to, not the ball. Again, good hitters, good players react to bodies, not the ball. Now, once the ball's set, the most common error that people make is they start watching the ball. In other words, as the ball's coming up, as the ball's passed high, they start watching the ball. Okay? Watch my eyes here. A little bit higher. There. Notice how I'm watching the ball? This isn't what you want to do. You want to discipline yourself to watch the hitter. As soon as we know who the hitter is, what we do is we turn and face the hitter. Watch the difference. Notice how I started to watch him. Good. See, I watched him as soon as the ball set. As soon as I knew who the hitter is, I turned towards him and watch him. What this allows me to do, it allows me to line up and cut off the hitter's approach. Go ahead and take an approach. As they come up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my legs to take away his approach. If he comes in like this, I'm going to put my right hand on about where his hitting arm is right here. My legs take away his legs. Now the next thing we do is, just like I said, we keep our shoulders locked on this spot when you're playing defense. This time, you're going to keep your hands on this spot. So in other words, my legs take away his legs. My arms take away his arm swing. So you can move your hands like this. The trick is always keep your hands facing inside the court. A lot of coaches will tell you, don't reach out. When you start reaching out like this, that's how the ball hits your outside hand, and that's how you get tooled. Now, the most important part to teach players how to look correctly and to play defense correctly, what you're going to do is to learn how to do this is you're just going to watch the hitter. So as the ball is set, and even before the ball is set, what I'm going to have you do is they set the ball, I'm just going to have you watch the hitter. In other words, this is a severe overcorrection. This is not how we block. The blocking sequence is passer's arms, setter, hitter. But to learn this and for you to, to learn it and for us to teach it, what you're going to do here is you're only going to watch the hitter before the ball's being set and you're going to block the hitter and not the ball. Here's a blocking drill that you can do, and this is a great drill. Again, this is an overcorrection. Normally, we watch the passer's arms, the setter, and then the hitter. In this case, what I'm going to have my two blockers do is to only watch the hitter. They're not going to watch me. They're not going to watch the ball. They're only going to watch the hitter. Now, to get them positioned, what I'm going to have you do is their toes are going to be slightly in like this so they can move in either direction. 
the next thing I'm going to have them do is to be athletic. And when we talk about being athletic, we talk about bending at the waist. Good. And now you're just going to watch the hitter as the hitter hits. Ready? Go. Watch only the hitter. Don't watch the ball. You can start even cl come closer, it'll be easier. There you go. Only watch the hitter be bent. Good. Only be bent over, only watch the hitter. Don't watch the ball or me. As a good player, you have a responsibility to make those around you a better player. And we do this often by either your personality, by playing well, or by communicating. Let me give you a couple tips here for communication. Couple, tip number one is a lot of times I see players, when the ball comes to them, they say something like, mine, I go, I got something like this. You're not making the next person take the move. What you have to learn how to do is produce and direct the play with your voice. In other words, it's not what you're doing, it's what the next person is going to do. So instead of saying mine or I go, the first tip I would give you is to call out the setter's name. Okay? So I would call it three times. Throw me the ball. Will, Will, Will. When I start calling out the setter's name, what I'm going to do is I'm telling the setter to set the ball. Now that part's pretty obvious. I'm also telling the other players not to set the ball. This is extremely important. When you start passing balls, you start calling out the setter's name, it lets everybody else know what to do on the court. You're producing and directing the players. This is one of the ways you communicate and make the players around you better. In the sport of volleyball, we have a front row and a back row. You have to be able to communicate between these two players effectively. What I suggest you do is the back row always controls the people in front of them. The way we do this is by yelling at people. Now, we're not mad at them. We're just trying to get them to move and direct their play here. If I'm yelling somebody, somebody's name, it's pretty obvious who's going to get this ball. Let me give you an example. When a ball comes over the net and we want somebody to take the ball, we are going to yell and scream their name. In other words, we're going to scare them into action here. They're going to have no other choice but to get the ball. Let me show you what this looks like. Whoa, 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 whoa! Notice how I scared them into action? Control the people in front of you. That's how you make them better. Make them better by controlling, directing, and producing the play. What tends to happen a lot is you see the setter taking the first ball. The ball comes over the net and the first person to take it is the closest person to it. And guess what? Your setter is going to take some of these balls. What do I hear everybody yell when this happens? The chorus is, setter out. What happens when the setter takes the first ball? Anarchy. What they do is the setter passes the ball here. They yell, setter out. The setter has just passed the ball between one, two, or maybe even three or four people. They're not really sure who's going to set the ball. What they end up doing is they start setting the ball on the 10 foot or 3 meter line and the poor hitter out here doesn't get a clean swing at the ball. In other words, whenever I hear the word setter out, I usually see a pillow fight erupt. What's a pillow fight? When you don't get good wood on the ball, you got to pass, set, hit the ball. The team that hits the best wins virtually every match. So. Instead of saying set her out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct the play not to one, but to two different people. Instead of saying set her out, I'm going to call the who I want to set the ball, and I'm going to tell them where to set the ball. Not only that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to start to cover my hitter. The reason we do this, and the question I get all the time is, hey coach, aren't you telling the defense where you're setting the ball? And the answer is, who cares? It's much more important to get a good swing at the ball than it is to slap or bump the ball over the net and start a pillow fight. So, setters, pay attention. 
When you take the first ball, what I want you to do is to call out who's going to set the next ball and tell them where to set the ball. And you probably should go over and cover because, yeah, the defense just found out where we're going to set the ball. Here's what it should look like. Throw the ball. Kevin, 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 set outside, set outside. Setters, pay attention. Here's what it should look like when you do this right. Don't say setter out. Instead, call out the setter's name. Tell them where to set the ball. This is how you get clean hits at the ball. Kevin, 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 set outside, set outside. How often do we have non-setters setting the ball? Well, in the sport of volleyball, it happens all the time. Ideally, we want the setter to set the ball all the time, but that doesn't happen all the time. So there's a couple rules for this, and the reason why is when non-setters set the ball, they tend to set it in between two hitters' hitting approaches. In other words, if you have two hitters like this, and I set a ball right here, both hitters could hit that ball. And typically what we see is when a ball's set in between two hitters, one of two things happen. The first is, is either both of them go up to hit and they collide.